Welcome. This recording will provide information about the PTRC Area Agency on Aging Family Caregiver Support Program, American Rescue Plan Act mini grants for caregiver respite. In March of 2020, our region, Region G, entered the beginning of a national pandemic that has negatively affected both older adults and family caregivers. As we begin 2022, we are hopeful that this pandemic can be behind us and that we can begin a national recovery. This request for application, RFA, is for grant proposals funded by the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, or ARPA. ARPA funds provide a unique opportunity to consider the needs and service delivery that have potential to respond to the unmet needs of older adults and family caregivers. The Piedmont Triad Regional Council Area Agency on Aging is taking a regional approach in distributing these funds based on the priorities which were established by the North Carolina Division of Aging and Adult Services. Service match is not required and funds remain available until expended or September 30th, 2024, whichever comes first. The project period for the funding is May 1st, 2022 through September 30th, 2024. All ARPA funds must be obligated by September 30th, 2024. Additional information may be located on the PTRC website under the specific Family Caregiver Support Services link. PTRC is making available eight mini grants of $16,250 each for the Family Caregiver Support Program Caregiver Respite Voucher mini grants through ARPA. The goal of the Family Caregiver Support Program is for caregivers to be empowered through education, be informed of services that are available to them that can support their well being, and that they can be connected to a support system to help reduce their level of stress, social isolation, and caregiver burden. Eligibility for Family Caregiver Support Program respite vouchers is for persons who are of any age and are who, who are providing unpaid care for an older adult age 60 or older, or who are providing care to an individual with Alzheimer's disease or related dementia. Eligibility also includes persons who are a relative caregiver, not a parent, aged 55 or older, and are living with or, and raising a relative child age 18 and under, or a relative or parent aged 55 or older living with and raising a relative child age between the ages of 19 and 59 with a disability. Please note that there are special eligibility requirements for respite services under the Family Caregiver Support Program. For these categories, the care recipient must meet the definition of frail as specified, specified by the Older Americans Act by being either unable to perform at least two activities of daily living without substantial assistance, and that includes verbal commands, physical cueing, supervision, and activities of daily living include eating, bathing, dressing, toileting, transferring in or out of a bed or chair, and ambulation, walking or moving around the home without any assistance or that person, that care recipient, may, due to a cognitive impairment or, or other, behave in a manner that poses a serious health or safety hazard to the individual or to another individual. So the Family Caregiver Support Services respite vouchers through ARPA must meet all the Older Americans Act and the North Carolina Division of Aging and Adult Services standards and guidance. Respite services fall under the category of four of the services available to support caregivers through the Title III-E National Family Caregiver Support Program. Those category four respite services are intended for the intermittent respite, time off for a specific, 
specific time to give the caregiver a planned or scheduled break, occasional respite, time off for the caregiver to attend a special event or necessary obligations, and emergency respite for the caregiver to take care of their own needs, such as emotional stress, the need for hospitalization, or for a health recovery. Offering respite services to a caregiver should always include the caregiver in the decision-making process whenever possible, and person-centered strategies should also be utilized. Respite care includes in-home respite, respite provided in a group setting, such as an adult daycare center, caregiver's day out type of program, or residential respite provided by placing the care recipient in a residential setting, such as a nursing home or assisted living for a brief period of time. Or in the case of an older adult raising a young child, summer camps, school programs, and after school programs are examples of that type of respite. Paid caregivers and professional caregivers are not able to utilize respite under the Family Caregiver Support Program. For example, a residential care facility cannot be granted funds through the Family Caregiver Support Program to supplement their own human resources or staffing needs. Further, respite is intended to provide intermittent, occasional, or emergency relief to a caregiver. It is not intended to be used as a supplemental payment source for residential facilities. Other programmatic requirements for Family Caregiver Support Program services include that as of July 1st, 2012, clients receiving the Family Caregiver Support Program respite and or Project Care respite may receive up to a total of $2,500 per fiscal year through assistance of both programs. The ARPA Family Caregiver Support Program respite services funding also includes non-unit reimbursement for protective personal equipment, but this cannot exceed more than 5% of the total allocation. There are reporting and documenting requirements for family, family caregiver support services. At a minimum, a file, a case file client record documentation should include the completed North Carolina Division of Aging and Adult Services 101 client registration form, a signed consumer contribution policy, a narrative in the case record indicating why the respite service is needed, documentation of the type of service that was provided and the number of units that were provided or the number of hours or the day number of days of a summer camp and time and fiscal tracking um, sheets of the respite services. Also assurance of confidentiality and documentation that the client was made aware of the grievance and appeals process as a part of their client bill of rights. Best practice also includes a copy of the assessment, subsequent reassessments, copies of the care plan, services plan signed by the Family Caregiver Support Program representative and client, and narrative documenting the communication and decisions made, progress made, and service termination information as appropriate. There is cost computation requirements. An accurately completed Family Caregiver Support Program budget form will be required of all ARPA Family Caregiver Support Program award recipients. Reimbursement for ARPA Family Caregiver Support Program respite are handled through a reimbursement system services provided um, and services will, provided will be reimbursed on a monthly basis through the state's Aging Resource Management System or ARMS. Reimbursement is dependent upon accurate reporting of the service data. All recipients of the ARPA Family Caregiver Support Program Caregiver Respite Mini Grant will be monitored by the PTRC Area Agency on Aging according to a timeline that is established by the North Carolina Division of Aging and Adult Services. Confidenti confidentiality and security is required of any client data and information. Record retention and disposition, all community service providers are responsible for maintaining custody of records and documentation to support that the allowable expenditure of funds, service provision, and the reimbursement of services. 
Service providers must adhere to the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services um, controller, which is located on the North Carolina DHHS.gov website. Service providers are not authorized to destroy records related to the provision of services under the agreement, except in compliance with the approved DHHS retention and disposition set schedule, which allows for the proper de destruction of records based on a schedule by funding source and by fiscal year. Confidential records will be destroyed in a manner such that the records cannot be practically read or reconstructed. The project period again, for the Family Caregiver Support Program mini grants is May 1st through September 30th of 2024. Should be noted that the PTRC Area Agency on Aging reserves the right to reject any or all applications, waive technicalities, and to be the sole judge of the suitability of services for their intended use, and further specifically reserves the right to make the award to the best within the best interest of the PTRC Area Agency on Aging Regional Program. Okay, next um, we are going to talk specifically about applying for um, these mini grants. And you will see that three copies of the RFA or the request for application with original signatures must be submitted to the PTRC Area Agency on Aging at 1398 Carrollton Crossing Drive, Kernersville, North Carolina, to the attention of Gwen Shields by April the 1st, 2022 at 4 p.m. Applications received after that date and time will not be considered for funding. Proposals that meet the PTRC Area Agency on Aging expectation for service delivery will be selected and applications will be scored based on the, their completeness and the description of intent to provide services. Again, the PTRC waives the right to reject any or all applications and to be the sole judge of the suitability of the services for their intended use. Failure to respond to any requirements outlined in this RFA or failure to enclose completed copies of the required documents may disqualify an application. There is a timeline. The announcement of the funding of availability is proposed for March 10th, 2022. The information sessions for all of the mini grants are recorded. The final date to submit questions regarding the RFA is March 23rd, 2022 at 4 p.m. Questions should be um, directed towards Gwen Shields, Area Agency on Aging. The final applications are due no later than April the 1st, 2022 at 4 p.m. at the Area Agency on Aging and award announcements will be made during the week of April the 25th. There is a link within the RFA to this recorded session. Upon award of a grant, an official budget will be completed using the required, um, required and award recipients will be required to submit um, ARPA Family Caregiver Support Program budget paperwork. There is an evaluation criteria a tool has been developed to evaluate applications and the tool will be available on the PTRC website. Proposals that best meet the PTRC Area Agency on Aging expectations for service delivery will be selected. Applications will be scored based on their completeness and their description of the intent to provide the services. Priority considerations are given to proposals that address the needs of older adults who are underserved underrepresented and or part of a rural population or food desert. Recording in progress. Available funding. All requests must be reasonable, necessary, and justifiable. Again, eight mini grants of up to $16,250 each will be awarded. All expenditures, again, must be reasonable, necessary, and justifiable. All funds must be spent on activities related to the ARPA Family Caregiver Support Program Respite Voucher, mini grants. And an organization may submit one application to provide um, respite to multiple locations and or counties. 
ARPA Family Caregiver Support Program respite services funding also includes non-unit reimbursement for personal protective equipment as stated earlier, but no more than 5% of the total allocation may be spent on that. Again, we have the um, monitoring that is done by the PTRC Area Agency on Aging. What follows after that um, explanation is the ARPA Family Caregiver Support Program respite services request for application. Three copies of the application with original signatures must be submitted and it must include all the information that's listed, including the organization's full legal name, the project director, their title, mailing address, phone number, board chairs, tax ID, the DUNS number, which um, you were given information on a, a month or so ago, and it must be a valid DUNS number, and the type of agency, nonprofit, for-profit, government, or other. Um, you're required to submit one copy of your organization's most recent financial statements, audited or unaudited. Um, for those organizations who are submitting unaudited financial statements, a completed state grant certification and sworn statement, and a completed schedule of receipts and expenditures are also required. Additional information may be also required. There are five um, questions, additional questions. Um, word count is not limited. We ask that um, you can expand on the space provided if you need additional space. Um, there is also, as a part of that ARPA request for application, a, um, a budget request to propose um, the funding needs to support the services described and um, uh, a small sample example of what those um, expense categories may include. But also um, be aware again that upon award of the um, grant, an official budget will be completed using the required Family Caregiver Support Program budget forms. The, um, in the, at, um, finally, the um, execution of the RFA, um, there is a, a portion for you to print your name, an authorized signature, the title of the authorized signature, and the date. And um, when these are submitted again, we will need three um, copies with original signatures submitted. I encourage you to read through the RFA thoroughly. We've covered most of it, but um, please read it on your own and um, thoroughly. And again, if you should be, um, have questions, they should be directed to Gwen Shields at the PTRC Area Agency on Aging no later than 4 p.m. on March 23rd 2022. Thank you.